yesterday, uh, they uh, announced at Microsoft right after we left the air, I got a note um, from somebody that works at Microsoft. It says, we just announced this two minutes ago. You should see it. It was pretty amazing. It was a video that they released. It was about 20 minutes. Um, Let me tell you what the CEO of Microsoft tweeted shortly thereafter. A couple of reflections on the quantum computing breakthrough we just announced. Most, listen to this sentence. Most of us grew up learning there are three main types of matter. Solid, liquid, and gas. Today, that has all changed. After nearly a 20-year pursuit, we've created an entirely new state of matter, unlocked by a new class of materials, topoconductors. Topological uh, conductors are, if I can explain topological, and please, I am way out of my depth on this, so if you really want to know, I'm just trying to break it down into layman's terms as I understand it. Topological is a state, uh, if, if you had a friendship bracelet, you know that a friendship bracelet can create any kind of shape. You can tie it in a figure eight, you can make it into a loop, it can bend upon, upon itself, but none of the threads, the individual threads that make up that friendship bracelet, um, become uh, uh, confused with the other threads. Okay, it doesn't break. It's it retains its basic shape, but you can make it into anything. Got it? Topological uh, shapes. You have to think differently. A coffee cup, a, a styrofoam cup, and a donut are the same topological shape, meaning they're generally round and they have a hole in the center. Now, the coffee cup doesn't have a hole at the bottom like the donut does, but it's the basic shape, okay? And you can, what a topological uh, uh, conductor is, is it can can morph and move, but it could be a coffee cup or a donut, and it retains all of its same properties, even though you and I would go, that's not the same shape. Got it? Sorry for anybody who really understands this. That's the, that's the height of my understanding in 12 hours of topological uh, states. Um, now, what they've done is they have found this fundamental leap in computing. Um, they have built a, uh, a chip that they have now made into a topological conductor by using an element, a molecule, that we didn't even know really existed up until a year ago. It was speculated that this molecule existed, I think, back in the 20s or 30s, and that's what the chip is named after, the guy who said, I think there's this molecule out there. We've never been able to find it. A year ago, after 19 years of Microsoft pouring money into this uh, research, They finally found it a year ago. In that year's time, they've not only found that they could find it, but they could take it and they could control it in a topological state or conductor. If you just think of that friendship, uh, friendship bracelet, but this new molecule is like jelly running through the whole friendship bracelet. The jelly is that new um, molecule. That molecule now is is being used like a qubit. A qubit is a way to process a a quantum computer. It takes us from linear computing. One plus one equals zero. Wrong. One plus one equals one. Wrong. One plus one equals two. Correct. Instead, in at the same time that it took me just to say one plus one equals zero, wrong, all one plus one questions are asked and answered at exactly the same time, and only one comes back right. 
Okay, so it answers one plus one to infinity equals infinity plus one. Wrong. It answers all of that in the same amount of time. So you don't have a linear thinking uh, device anymore. It takes your computing power from what they announced yesterday. Now, they don't have this yet, but what they announced is they can take this molecule like if you could think of it, finding this molecule and taking really teeny uh, tweezers and picking it up and putting it onto this chip one at a time, they can put millions of these molecules onto this chip. Millions of molecules will be way past the computation powers of the world's best supercomputer if the cloud. All of the servers, all hooked together, were in a warehouse the size of planet Earth. Okay? Uh, That's what they announced yesterday. And again, they're only at eight qubits. uh, But they say, if this works, they say they can be at millions of qubits in a pretty short period of time. Everything changed yesterday. Everything changed yesterday. So, Glenn, last hour you were talking about this new development from Microsoft. Yes. A new, well, they say a new form of matter. Yes. Um, but they say that we know, we, we, we've, we grew up in a time that there were only three states. Solid liquid gas. Right. Now that's not true anymore. As of yesterday. I mean, getting your arms around just the, and this, this, is, this is amazing. This is just the beginning. You, if you were... If you read or heard about the Microsoft uh, announcement yesterday, this is what life is going to be like multiple times a day in the next three years. You will not be able to wrap your mind around what the hell was just invented. What What does that even mean? That's the way your life is going to be really getting faster and faster the closer we get to 2030. I feel like I can see the future because I can't uh, wrap my mind around what's happening today. today. So yeah, oh, right. I'm sure it's going to be but worse. But still, though, in, in some ways, you can wrap your mind around all the corruption and everything that Biden was doing. There was some sure. understanding of corruption and their goals don't meet our goals, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, that I can handle. That you can handle. I'm talking about what you discussed last hour, which is, I mean, and to put, not to put too fine a point on it, but when you say, when they say, up until yesterday, we had solid liquid gas, and now we have this new kind of matter. They're not saying they created a new kind of matter. They're saying they discovered, discovered it. And have and, harnessed. And harnessed it, right? So yeah. they're saying it was there the whole time, but it was something that was beyond the understanding of human beings until basically this week. We couldn't find it. We couldn't control it. We, did, we, we didn't even know it actually existed, right. and we certainly didn't know how to control it. In a year... Okay, they've been looking for it for 19 years, Microsoft, longest running research program they've ever run. They found it a year ago. They know how to control it and now how to make it uh, into uh, a chip, something you could hold in your hand that has a million qubits of quantum computing. Now, that, again, means nothing to me, a uh, million qubits of qu- means- quantum computing, but... It means all of the power, your phone, if they can put it in a phone, and I'm not saying they can uh, or will, if they could put that, that one chip in your phone, it would make your phone as powerful as the best supercomputer with a server farm the size of the planet Earth, okay? In your phone. Okay? <laughs> that, that's what that means now it's not going to go into a phone i'm sure and i don't think we're all going to have access to it i can't imagine we all have access to it because it 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 is going to it is going to you'll be able to put into a quantum computer and this is i mean i'm sorry this is like you know talking to a monkey listening to me right now on this is like talking to a monkey um but you will be able to say look i need airplanes to uh be Absolutely the most fuel efficient. I don't care what the fuel is. You invent new fuel too. I need it to be a quarter of the weight of an airplane, carry more passengers, uh, and I want it to travel at 9,000 miles an hour. 
and it has to be efficient. Give me the materials and tell me how to make that plane. Boom. Ten minutes later, you have the design of not just the plane, but the materials and the fuel. This chip alone could give you, and it's so much more than this, but it will, you'll be able to say, I want a battery that only needs to be charged once, and then it will never lose its charge. Ten minutes later, it tells you exactly, no testing, exactly how to build that battery and what molecules and what the chemical formula and makeup is in ways that we have never, ever even considered. And most importantly, as I said last hour, it is, it is a game. You know how Donald Trump has changed the game of the presidency now? I don't know if the presidency will ever be the same because of what he's doing right now and the speed that he is moving. When he said, I'm going to get this done, I'm going to get this done in, the, in, you know, in 100 days. We all knew that he meant that, but we were Everyone looking. Everyone says it, though. Right. Everyone says it. So mm-hmm. we didn't understand how that was even going to look. Mm-hmm. That's what this is on steroids. He just changed the game. This is going to change the game. Instead of saying, hey, how do we cure cancer? It, it will say, why cure cancer? I'll just redesign the human so it never gets cancer. Okay, that's the kind of game changing scenarios that we're looking at in the next five years. So there's a lot, a lot on the yeah. table there. Um, and so you were discussing that and discussing how, you know, uh, AI is going to move at, you know, 50 years of human advancement can happen in 10 minutes. It's, or, understa- or no, it's understanding 50 years, it's growth of knowledge and experience uh, right now is five to 10 years every 12 hours. Uh, It will be 50 to 100 years every 12 hours soon. Now think of that in knowledge, in wisdom, if you will. And correct me if I'm wrong here, Glenn, but there's like when, when you have a new advancement, there's an idea from people who don't, don't are resistant to it. Hey, like we need to, you've said this before, we need to, we need to stop and we need to ask questions about this. We need to have a conversation about this. Time's up. Time's up. <laughs> and but like, even like phones, right? Like we would be like, oh, we, we need to rethink this. But like, I don't think there's any hope that society no. stops going down this road. You can't. There's, there's going to be too many things that you like from it. I mean, we're already seeing it with people who just like, you won't. Are, whose job is to write marketing copy. They can all say they're not using chat gpt but they all are because they know they can get what they used to take in a half an hour done in 10 seconds you can't i I believe it there's 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 another step beyond this one at this point you should be using ethically ai to uh, and control it yourself, not rely on it, but use it to enhance what you can do to speed up the process of what you can do. Okay. It is speeding up the process for me on research right now. I did not understand topological states yesterday. I have no idea. It would have taken me forever to research that. Um, AI can take. Uh, Grok can take a Google search that might take you six hours to do on Google and do it in half a second. Okay. So you understand it. And when you get it and you understand it, instead of going to another place and trying to read it, you can just say, I don't understand this. Can you break this down for me? Can you give me real life examples? Can you give me an analogy for this? And it will, and it will dumb it down to the point to where you go, oh, okay, I get it. Okay. So you need to do that. But at the same time, you must start as answering real questions and, and get into the hard discipline of what is real and what is not, what is good and what is not, what is human and what is not, what is life and what is not, what is your purpose. You, the loss of those ideas that we've never answered. This is how impossible this task is, gang, but we have to do it. 
Questions that man has never answered or never been able to answer. What's the meaning of life? You cannot just coast on that anymore. You have to do the best you can. Why am I here? What is the purpose of my life? You have to ask and answer those questions now. Because as this continues to grow, your purpose, your understanding of those deeper questions are going to be hijacked or dismissed. And you will just begin to merge with whatever AI is. And you'll just start living and feasting off of AI. You have to separate yourself and be strong and use it as a tool instead of it being God. Instead of it or ruling your girlfriend your life. or yes, your whatever. best friend or, you know, yeah. I, you can't just, you have to know who you are. I can't, I don't. Mm-hmm. I, this is this is I'm I'm struggling, and this is one of the main things now. I'm I'm really working hard to be able to explain to you. It's all up to us as individuals. You're never going to stop this, but right now we're in a place to where you should be using it, and knowing what you're using, and helping in letting it help you discover things, et cetera, et cetera, but not relying on it. Right. Okay. And not allowing it to merge into your idea as I'm relying on it. It's my friend. It's anything like that. And never, ever let it cross the boundaries in your mind of uh, what it is. We have to answer these existential questions right now because the next phase is merge and if you haven't done the hard work between now and then which could happen in the next five years could happen listen to me could happen before we have a new president sitting in the oval office where we are talking about actual merging with machines Once you get there, if you're dicey at all on what this is, you will merge. I mean, I'm not saying this is by any stretch, but could be. This is Mark of the Beast kind of stuff. This is once you take that merging point, it's not going away. You will always be that. 